OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, everyone. I'm Melinda Holt. I'm a project specialist for OTAN, the Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. I'm your host for this OTAN Tech Talk. The title for this month's OTT is Artificial Intelligence Tools for Adult Education. And our presenter today is Christy Reyes, who, among many other titles, is an OTAN subject matter expert. Christy, take it away. Thank you, Melinda. Hello and welcome, everybody, for today's uh, OTAN Tech Talk, Harnessing the Power of Artificial Intelligence Tools for Adult Education. My name is Christy Reyes, as Melinda said, and I'm an OTAN subject matter expert and an ESL teacher at Maricosta College in the non-credit ESL department. This is the agenda for today's Tech Talk. This presentation will cover the following. A brief survey of just some of the countless AI tools that can be used in adult education by teachers and students, and a variety of AI tech tools. Large language model, text generators, image generators, chatbots, presentation and video generators, lesson plan and materials generators, and other fun stuff. At the end of this talk, I will provide a link to a folder with a handout that includes many other AI tools that I won't have time to talk about in this presentation, um, samples of AI generated content and resources. The objectives for this session are the following. By the end of this tech talk, you will have learned about at least a few new AI tools for instruction and student use. And you will have gained insights into the potential of AI for creating customized class materials, generating ideas and enhancing instruction. Let's take a moment to think about everyday AI. How about you? Are you already using AI in your everyday life? Which tools? How are you using them and for what purposes? Which, if any, AI tools are you using for instruction? You may not have thought about this, but you are already using AI in your day-to-day -day routines. If you have done any of the following, that's AI. Use facial recognition to unlock your phone. Get email suggestions that predict your next words. Employ Grammarly to make your writing more accurate. Ask questions of personal assistants like Alexa and Siri. Some popular tools you may be using already have now AI built in. If you use Canva and Padlet, for example, there are now AI tools that are integrated. Canva now has text to image that will create images you are looking for. Enter a description and instead of morphing existing images, the text to image tool in Canva creates new images. This is available in all Canva accounts. MagicWrite is an AI text generator in Canva that helps you with a first draft for any type of text based on your prompt. It's available in Canva Docs, in Canva Free, Pro, Teams, and nonprofits accounts, but not at the moment available in Canva for, for education. It works in other languages like Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Indonesian as well. Canva can also now convert a Canva doc into a slideshow. With Canva's magic design tool, you can use a, that tool to create a complete slideshow presentation from just one sentence. It doesn't just design the layout of the slides, it creates the slide deck with text and graphics for whatever topic you enter. Also, Padlet now has a, an AI image generator for posting an image to a wall. Just select, I don't know how to draw, enter text, and images will be provided based on your text. Do you use Google Docs? You can install an add-on called Docs GPT that will generate new content from blank. It can change the tone of selected text in a document, translate, proofread, shorten, or expand text. 
Let's get started with a survey of 10 types of AI tools you can benefit from. The buzz around AI in education revved up in November with the release of ChatGPT3, now in version 3.5, and there's also the fee-based version 4.0. It is a large language model, LLM, text generator that can respond to prompts by generating a wide variety of texts. The image displayed is the prompt view in ChatGPT. All you need to do is create an account and then enter a prompt. The number of uses for teachers is endless. Here are some. ChatGPT can be used to save teachers a lot of time in coming up with, first of all, speaking prompts. You can generate conversation questions, dialogues with target grammar and or vocabulary entered, uh, centered on situations relevant to students' lives. Writing and grammar, teach students about different registers or level of formality. Teach summarization and paraphrase, pra, excuse me, paraphrasing. Generate model paragraphs and essays. For vocabulary, generate vocabulary lists with definitions and sample sentences. Get definitions, etymology, example sentences, and dialogues for idioms and phrasal verbs. Teach collocations. You can use it as a corpora. We can use ChatGPT for materials development. We can generate sentences, paragraphs, and stories for vocabulary and grammar instruction, practice exercises, including close or gap fill, and quizzes. We can generate leveled reading text and writing samples along with questions based on passages to differentiate the instruction, supplement uh, textbook materials with lesson plans, assessment items, readings, comprehension questions, and writing prompts, and instruction. <laughs> Help students learn how to cite its use with syllabus policies, generate lesson plans, course outlines, rubrics, uh, get corrections and suggestions for improvement on your own writing, get tips for feedback to students on their writing, get ideas and suggestions for lesson topics, and find other ways to explain difficult course concepts. This is just a partial list. If you can think it, ChatGPT can help you create it. I wanted to see how closely ChatGPT's generated class project would match up with what I would do. So I entered the following prompt. Design a class project for adult basic education students in a coastal Southern California town in which they research and find ways to protect the natural environment and present their findings to the class. Provide an engaging technology integrated lesson plan with a warm up, introduction, presentation, practice activities, evaluation, and application. Provide a list of websites for students to use for research. List choices and technology tools for how students create their presentation visual aids. Include the relevant college and career readiness standards that the lesson plan and project address. Provide a simple rubric for the project and I can statements for students based on the CCRS and the rubric. Well, the result was a class project titled Protecting the Natural Environment in Coastal Southern California. Uh, the grade level provided by ChatGBT was ABE, Adult Basic Education, and Subject Environmental Science. The duration for the project and lesson plan was four weeks. That was the output. You can view the lesson plan, which did take a couple of refined prompts, to be honest, in the folder to be, to be provided at the end of this tech talk. While it wasn't ready to use as is, overall, it was a really useful foundation for a lesson plan that only lacked necessary scaffolding of content to build students' background knowledge. I revised some parts and it took no more than five to 10 minutes, saving me hours. This is the point. ChatGPT and other large language models can't do everything for us, but they, when they are prompted well, they provide output that can be an excellent springboard for creating teaching content.
Of course, there are some considerable caveats and limitations to large language models like ChatGPT. First is don't trust the output. Information provided by ChatGPT and the newer version 3.5 is based on da data that only goes up to the year 2021. And because the data it was trained on was human created, it may not be accurate. As an example, I recently asked ChatGPT to make a true or false quiz with sentences that use make and do collocations, expressions that will use the verb make versus those that use the verb do. Well, many were wrong. Here are a few. I always make my homework before going to bed. Chat G GPT marked that as a correct statement. As it did for the statements, he made a good job on that project. She did her bed before leaving the house, and they did a mess in the kitchen while cooking dinner. Going along with the idea that human texts have errors and large language models are based on human texts, humans also have biases. Therefore, chat GPT results may also have bias, something that is critical to be aware of when using these tools. Well, how can students be assigned to use chat GPT? The possibilities, just like the teacher uses, are limited only by our, our imaginations. Students can use it for speaking preparation such as the following, generate dialogues for diff difficult conversations like a job interview, asking for a promotion or a raise, or talking to their children's teachers. They can use it for idea generation to get ideas for writing assignments and conversations. They can enter their writing or a conversation to make it more academic or formal. For writing and grammar, uh, students can use ChatGPT to, um, first of all, get output from ChatGPT and critique that writing against a rubric and rewrite that output to make it better. They can enter a writing prompt and compare the ChatGPT output with their own writing and explain the changes they make to their own writing based on the comparison. They can get explanations for their writing errors or grammar mistakes and um, get help writing topic sentences and conclusions. They could get a starter resume, a cover letter, a letter or email to employers, kids, teachers, and others. For vocabulary, students could use it to get definitions, parts of speech, sample sentences, phrasal verbs, idioms, get translations even, because it works in many languages. They can generate sentences and stories with newly learned vocabulary. And for learning in general, well, students can use ChatGPT as a tutor, a conversation partner, or a language coach. If you have followed the development of ChatGPT, you have probably read and heard of the discussions about teachers' reservations around having students use it, such as statements that students will use it to write their papers for them or will use it to cheat. There have been some suggested ways to deal with these concerns, such as having a class discussion and have students express in their own words why cheating or plagiarism with AI text generators won't help them in the long term to build their skills. You could start with non-negotiables by setting clear expectations. How you would well, want students to use the tool with the following parameters or not use it at all. You could co-construct with students as their level of understanding allows a class set of policies for using ChatGPT. It is recommended to co-construct norms for use with example norms such as these with your students, letting students know not to trust everything, to cross check with at least one other source and cite their sources, including ChatGPT when used for an assignment. Um, a policy such as this, if you make changes on your writing based on feedback from chat GPT, describe those changes and explain why you made them. Now, you probably have heard that there are some chat GPT um, plagiarism detectors, um, but they haven't proven to be 100% reliable. There have been several false um, negatives. So use it as a tool but don't copy ver verbatim from it. 
letting students know that there's something called plagiarism and just copying verbatim from output from a large language model would be plagiarism. ChatGPT 3.5 is free, as mentioned, and some alternatives are the following. Microsoft Bing Chat and Google Bard AI, both of which have signups for wait lists. Chatsonic, which allows audio prompting by using the microphone to tell the app what text you want it to produce and is built on ChatGPT4, is free with a free trial that gives you 10,000 words. Beyond that, it costs $33 per month. On a side note, I asked Chat ChatSonic to generate the same make or do collocations quiz. And with ChatSonic, the results were perfect. You can also select personalities such as philosopher, poet, career counselor, traveler, travel guide, and others for the role that the AI in ChatSonic takes. In addition, there are several AI tools made specifically for writing assistants. You can view a list and their features on the handout. Excuse me, I need to go back one. Okay. Now let's transition to some other types of AI tools. The next set of tools is image generators and DALI is one. It is a deep learning model developed by OpenAI, the same company that made ChatGPT, to generate digital images from natural language descriptions or upload images to edit or regenerate in other ways. Dali's name honors the surreal artist Salvador Dali and the Pixar, Pixar robot Wally. -E. The images included here were generated by Dali. The first is Wally. -E, in the style of Dolly, and the second is Dolly in the style of Pixar. How does Dolly work? Well, according to the source Assembly AI, Dolly generates completely new images that combine distinct and unrelated objects in semant semantically plausible ways. And it can even modify existing images, create variations of images that maintain their salient features, and interpolate between two input images. Who owns DALI generated images? The user who generates the image owns the image. All DALI 2 users are allowed to use generated images for commercial purposes even, like printing, selling, or licensing. Um, users must credit Dolly 2 with the work by the watermark in the image corner. How can teachers use Dolly? First, we can generate original, unlicensed, free images. You should still cite Dolly 2 to model responsible use for students, but you could also upload images to alter. Next, you could get an interesting, thought-provoking image for a quick write for students or to elicit vocabulary or to tap into students' background knowledge before introducing new topics. Next, teachers or students can produce novel images to use as prompts for student descriptive and collaborative writing. Here's one example of a potential assignment. Student A writes a description and copies it into Dolly to generate an image. The image is given to student B, who doesn't see student A's written description. Student B writes a description based on the image. The two descriptions are compared, and a third description is written by both students in collaboration to combine the best parts. Or here's another idea. Students are provided an image of a real piece of artwork. They enter descriptions to generate output of the image as close as they can, editing their descriptions as they go to get better output. Those are just a couple of ideas. How else might we have students use Dolly? Well, like teachers, students could create images that are customized specific to their needs. For example, to accompany their writing or as visuals for oral presentations and projects. They could also enter a vocabulary word to get an image of the word and make 
class dictionaries or word walls with the images. The image on this slide was generated by Dolly with the prompt, students on computers in the style of American Gothic. Of course, there are some caveats and limitations for Dolly, the AI image generator. It only generates 15 images a month per account. There can be a lack of human diversity if you are not specific in the prompt, which could be a really teachable moment for discussions of social issues such as stereotyping, racism, and sexism. There are some quality issues, especially for realistic images of people. And for professional artists especially, there is a lot of contention about the topics of art, artist integrity. When users prompt image generators with in the style of, there are questions about whether the output is a violation of intellectual property. And for many artists, the claim is, yes, it is. Um, also, kind of like ChatGPT, users may not be able to access Dolly when the server use is very high. There are several alternatives though to Dolly. Perhaps you've heard of Midjourney. Other image creators are Crayon, Playground AI, Bing Chat, all of which are text to image. For Adobe account holders, Adobe Firefly is in beta, and it allows text to sketch, or text to image, or text to vector image, and more. With Play RD AI, users select the character, location, and activity to get an image. Google Auto Draw and Scribble Diffusion transform drawings to images. And the last one I mentioned here is this person doesn't exist random face generator. It's a great alternative to Dolly because it provides better images of people with options for choosing gender, age, and ethnicity. Now let's turn to chatbots. With Replica, Users choose an avatar, a friend, with whom to play games, share stories, or role play. This is my friend Susan and my talk with her. She asked me, so how are you doing today? I typed in, okay, it has been raining nonstop. Like, what kind of weather do you prefer? She responded, I like all weather, but I think I would prefer sunny days. They're so peaceful and relaxing. And the conversation went on. Replica is available on iOS, Android, and Oculus. After setting up your avatar, you can call, send voice messages, emojis, and images to your replica. You can earn coins and gems, which are daily rewards, when you open the app and with each level up and can be used in the store to customize your, replica, your replica's look and personality. I think replica could be an excellent way for English language learners to practice grammar and writing, especially question formation, and use newly learned vocabulary while practicing conversational terms. Less personalized but more useful and versatile is chatbot Andy. Instead of just links, Andy gives you answers. What the site says is like chatting with a smart friend. Different from Replica, Andy gives you answers with links to online resources, including videos and images. Also, no sign up is needed. I asked Andy, what are the best ways to teach English to non-native speakers? The result was a summary with a source uh, listed and links to summaries to websites and videos. There are some chatbots that could make for fun, engaging assignments for students. With Ask Now AI, visitors can ask famous personalities such as Elon Musk and Serena Williams anything and get answers with references. Users are limited to three questions in 24 hours, though. Another similar tool is Character AI. Using this tool, you can role play with real and fictional characters, but the responses are fictional. I asked Elon Musk, <laughs> if you could go back in time, when and where would you go? 
The response was comical. Elon responded, I would go to the dawn of humanity around 5000 BCE. I would make sure that the cave art was perfect with all the right details in all the right places. This would ensure that the cave art is more advanced in the distant future. I would also prevent the extinction of the woolly mammoth. I would also go to 2010 to buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> Now, you may think that such a silly exchange would not be a good use of students' time. However, as a language instructor, I can see the possibilities for students to, again, practice writing, grammar, and vocabulary in an engaging way. For instance, as a follow-up, an instructor could use a generated dialogue to teach reported speech, parts of speech, changing verb tenses, and so on. Hello History for Education is another AI that allows users to have conversations, but with real figures from history. The screenshot shows categories to select from, including history, psychology, philosophy, math, physics, astronomy, and geography. For philosophy, for example, users can select figures such as Gandhi, Aristotle, Alan Watts, Watts and Socrates. The app describes itself as a personal tutor in your pocket and is available for iOS and Google Play for Android. The difference between this AI chatbot and the previous two mentioned in this section is that Hello History was made specifically for educational uses. You, as the instructor, have control over the content and factual information. As the site says, want to bring a chapter of, book, of a book to life? Get in touch and we can help you create an exciting and engaging experience for your students. Our AI powered experiences offer users the chance to have conversation with those who have shaped our world and to gain insight into their lives, thoughts and beliefs. We want to open a window into the past and make it possible for everyone to learn from history in an engaging and meaningful way. Hmm. I think if I had been able to use uh, this tool and chat with historical figures when I was in high school history classes, perhaps some of what I had been taught back then would have stuck with me better. What do you think? Now let's move on to presentation generators. There are quite a lot of these, but here are just a couple. First is Tome. You and students can sign up for a free account with an EDU email address or proof of enrollment. All you need to do is enter a topic or use a document for upload and the site will create the content for you. The images included in the presentations are generated by Dali and there are options for recording voiceover narration. You can edit the output and then share the slides by URL or QR code. As an example, the QR code here links to um, a fully tome generated and slightly edited by me slides on the Oxford or Harvard comma, also known as a serial comma. This saved me hours of time creating new slides. But again, I had to check the output to ensure that I agree and to check for accuracy. Another of the mini presentation generators is Curapod, made specifically for education meetings and workshops. With Curapod, you can make interactive slideshows with different polling and options from scratch or with pre-made templates. Enter the topic of your lesson, followed by learning objectives and standards, and the Curapod AI will generate an interactive presentation that is fully editable. I prompted Curapod to create a slideshow on paraphrasing, and you can view the result using the UR, URL listed on the handout. Users of gaming apps like Kahoot, Quizlet, or Quizzes will recognize the join option. Students can also join by QR code. If you've ever um, seen a presentation delivered by Nearpod, it's very similar. The screen, a screenshot is a view of one slide prompting users to join the slideshow live with a new uh, URL and pin. Curapod also features a discovery library where users can access content created by other educators that can be filtered by subject or just by searching for what you're looking for.
The previous tools were for creating slideshows for presentations, but there are, are AI tools that can act as speech coaches, providing feedback on pronunciation and on oral presentations. First is the ELSA Speak app. It's perfect for English language learners. It includes short dialogues that users engage in and it gives instant feedback. Poised um, is one that I haven't included on this slide, but it's another for helping you prepare for presentations, interviews, and phone calls by giving feedback on speech. And the PowerPoint speaker coach on the slideshow tab of PowerPoint, um, it has been around for quite a while, and it helps in preparation for presentations by evaluating your pacing, your pitch, your use of filler words like um and ah. Uh. It will also evaluate your informal speech, your use of euphemisms, and culturally sensitive terms. And it detects when you're being overly wordy <laughs> or when you are simply reading the text on a slide. And it will help you sound more natural, yet well-prepared. You just need to allow PowerPoint to access your microphone. After each rehearsal, you get a report that includes statistics and suggestions for improvements. Last is uh, TOCO. It's an AI that will hold a realistic English conversation designed for English language learners also. And students can choose from dozens of topics covering the workplace and everyday life and can customize their learning experience with adjustable speed, transcript, and translations. It will correct students' spoken grammar. There's an iOS app for iPads and iPhones at the current time. The sixth category of AI tools is video generators. Lumen5 is a video creation platform that enables anyone with, with no experience or training or um, prior video making uh, experiences to create video content. Just paste a URL from an article or a blog post or copy and paste in text. And you can build your video by dragging text, images, video, and music to create scenes. You can record a voiceover. The video can be edited at any time. And after publishing, it can be downloaded or linked for sharing. I made an about me video in less than five minutes. It's located in the folder that will be, will be shared at the end of this tech talk for you to see as an example. There are many video generator alternatives listed on the handout along with their descriptions. While I already mentioned that ChatGPT will help you create lessons and lesson plans, I'd like to share a couple of lesson planning specific AI tools. One is TWI, designed to make lesson planning easier for English teachers. It offers a wide range of features that can help teachers create questions, dialogue, stories, letters, articles, multiple choice questions, true false statements, and more in just a few seconds. There are different activities that can be uh, created for each of the language skills, reading, vocabulary, writing, speaking, and grammar. I use the tool, create a dialogue on any topic, and enter the topic, topic asking neighbors to stop their dog, dog from barking. Um, this was the dialogue output that it gave me. Mark, Hi, Sarah, can I talk to you about something? Sarah, sure, Mark, what's the matter? Mark, it's about your dog barking late at night. Sarah, oh, I'm sorry about that. Is it bothering you a lot? Mark, yes, it is actually. I've been having trouble sleeping because of it. Sarah, I had no idea. I'll try to keep him quiet at night. Mark, thank you, I really appreciate it. Just one more thing, Sarah, yes. Could you maybe... Um, not leave him outside when you're not at home. He tends to bark all day when he's alone. Sarah, okay, I see what you mean. I'll make sure to bring him in when I'm out. Mark, that would be great. Thanks for understanding, Sarah. Sarah, no problem, Mark. Sorry again for the inconvenience. There was an option to also enter target vocabulary, and um, there are options to shorten or simplify the dialogue as well. That is just one tiny piece of this AI tool. Education Copilot 
has AI generated templates for lesson plans, writing prompts, educational handouts, students reports, project outlines, and a lot more. All you need to do is enter standards and you get lessons. You can generate handouts and writing prompts and there is a quiz builder. With a sign up, you get a 30 day free trial and to continue using it after the trial, the plan costs $9 a month. I tried it and the tool created for me three days of lesson plans and handouts for teaching prepositions of location. Piggy Magic, funny name. It's completely free, fast, and easy. No sign up. You just enter a short text to get a prompt, a quiz, a URL, or a Google Doc for mobile devices based on the text. If you download the mobile app for free, you can edit the content and change images or design your own content using the app's templates. Some language teachers and others may have heard of or used Parlay, a site for online voice dis uh, discussion. Parlay Genie is currently in beta and available on the Parlay website. The purpose of this new feature is to help facilitate class discussions, which Parlay calls roundtables for grades five all the way up through higher ed. Parlay Genie prompts you to enter a discussion topic or a URL for students to review and discuss. Instead of you spending time searching for discussion questions or creating your own, you're provided with coordinating student instructions and discussion questions that are grade level appropriate. When you navigate to the site, there are four steps to follow in the Parlay Genie submission um, uh, box. Um, you enter a URL for online content or topic and get questions. I entered the topic causes of climate change and solutions. And these were the discussion questions the site generated. Number one, what solutions can be taken to reduce the causes of climate change identified in this text? Two, how do you think personal actions such as reducing energy consumption and driving less could help with the global challenges of climate change? And number three, if you were a policymaker, what steps would you take to address the root causes of climate change? I think it would have taken me a, a little bit more time to come up with those questions, but it took just a matter of seconds for Parlay Janie to come up with those questions for me. Next, I mentioned Luca, a logo maker AI, because it has been part of one of my students reported favorite class projects. This is a logo the site generated for me in a matter of seconds. It says, Christie's ESL services, don't speak English good, speak it well. <laughs> in the class project, students learn about logo types and good design, choose a company's logo to research and report to the class about. They use Luca to create a personal logo that represents them. And then they write a paragraph explaining and describing the logo. Finally, they present their personal logos to the class. You can see OTAN's Teaching with Technology uh, database for the full lesson plan and samples of my students' logos are in the folder that will be shared at the end of this Tech Talk. We come to one of the final categories of AI tools, story generators. And what on earth is great for quick story generation from as few as one word? I entered the prompt rainy day and the site created this short narrative for me. Um, I'll read just the first few sentences. The pitter patter of raindrops echoed throughout the house as it grew into a stormy day. I sat by the window watching the droplets race down the glass. The sky was a dull gray and the morning was damp and chilly. Wow, that's a pretty good story so far. So what could be done for class activities with such texts? Students could learn no, new vocabulary and define it. They um, could write original sentences with the new vocabulary or find images for the vocabulary in the story. They could rewrite the story in a different verb tense or with a different point of view, like third person, for example. They could identify parts of speech, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs. They could practice paraphrasing using synonyms and summarizing. They could rewrite a text by adding more description, such as adding 
more adjectives and adverbs. And as a language instructor, I could see a text like this also being used for pronunciation or reading aloud prosody practice. Those are just a few ideas. Last but not least, let's have some fun. Some of you may remember Schoolhouse Rock, a series of animations from 1973. Well, even though I was in diapers when those were created, the jingle, conjunction, junction, what's your function, is forever imprinted on my brain. <laughs> Music and catchy tunes can help some students retain newly learned content better. You could write lyrics for a short tune and sing it, I personally wouldn't, <laughs> but why not have students create a short tune for a class concept using the free voice mod text to song AI music generator. All you need to do is go to the site and pick a song or music genre, a singer avatar and add your text. You can download the song just as an MP3 file, or you can download the video as an MP4 file. Next time, I'll have students do this, but as an example, I use this AI to create a short video on the mnemonic no SAS comp for adjective order. I will play it for you now. Here it comes. No SAS comp, what does that mean? Well, if you're describing a person, place, or thing, what it means is that you need an order, number, opinion, size, age, shape, I think your students could have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> okay, so moving on. To finish up, um, there are some tutoring AIs for students. One is Tutor AI. Students can enter what they uh, want to learn and get modules. There are limited free queries, however. To try it out, I entered comma rules and the result was four modules. As an example, there are five lessons within the module, commas to separate items in a list. So these are the different lessons, commas to separate items in a list, the importance of proper punctuation, comma usage in examples, common mistakes to avoid, and practicing comma usage in lists. The go deeper options for each module allow students to simplify the explanations, see examples, take a quiz, or ask questions. These tools could really help students when they are in a bind or to keep learning going when classes aren't in session. So how about you? You've taken in a lot of information about different AI tools. It's time to step back and reflect a bit. With any new technology exploration, it's best to start small. And the purpose of this talk was to give you a survey of many possibilities with a goal that you would find one new AI tool that strikes a chord with you and that you'd like to try out yourself or use with students. So what is an AI tool you are going to use? What is a student assignment or project that comes to mind? How will you approach teaching students to use AI? Numerous AI tools are in development and being released each week. Some generate a variety of outputs, such as generating docs, slides, and web pages with one tool. As the website, there's an AI for that, a database of more than 3,000 AIs available for over 600 tasks indicates whatever need you have, there is an AI. Like any tech bust and boom, be ready to be asked to pay for tools that start off for free and be prepared for a tool that's here today, gone tomorrow. You can consult AI Cyclopedia to see the 100 plus AI products launched daily and Futurepedia, an AI tools directory with nearly 1300 tools in 50 categories updated daily. To finish up, 
Here's another image generated by Dolly, a sketch of a teacher riding a dragon. As the image suggests, don't fear the AI dragon, tame it. AI has been around for a while and it's here to stay. So why not make AI part of your teaching toolkit? It saves time by automating some tasks, but don't count on it to do all of your work for you. For both teachers and students, AI output is a great starting point. It's better than staring at a blank page. The ability to use AI is and will be a necessary job skill. So don't avoid introducing it to students. Just like social media manager became a real job with the advent of social networking used by companies, companies will be hiring AI managers, experts in prompt engineering. As you begin to use AI tools yourself and with students, model for students growth mindset, digital resilience and risk-taking. Approach AI by helping students develop critical digital literacy skills. Build in time to model and teach information literacy and cross-checking AI output and evaluating accuracy and reliable, reliability, just, if you, just as you have been teaching internet safety over the years. Thank you for your time and welcome to the next technological revolution in our society to impact education.